This is your premier dinner lineup. I'm not sure where else you could be watching or listening because I, Mark Howard, are joined by Phil Tufnell, Kerry O'Keefe, <laughs> and Mick Malloy. And we are Present. about to do something never before heard on cricket. We are having a story off. Each gentleman ah, has three minutes or so to oh. tell their best oh, you can't. Too much cricket pressure. story. <laughs> Hang on, and I've been enjoying the preparation. Uh, Mick went up to the Hill of Grace restaurant, had a couple of reds just to calm yourself down, Mick. I call it a drinks break. That's Howie. right. That's uh, right. After a hard-earned two stints on air, <laughs> having missed the first two days, I thought it was appropriate. I went up there and went berserk. Can I recant, by the way, everything I've said about this is oh. the greatest city in the world. <laughs> You're on board now. The people, the greatest restaurants. Thank you oh. so much, Hilly Grace. Okay, I'll start. Hang on, hang on. So you prepared by having a wine. Tuffers had to go and see the censorship department with his story. <laughs> Apparently, it's a touch on the blue side. Well, it might be a little bit. Hello. And but it, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not really. And I've had a cappuccino. And we know, <laughs> we know, Kerry, yours will get at least one laugh, which Mine. will be your own. There yeah. we go. All right, Mick, you are Can going I... first in the great Triple M cricket story off. Do you mind? Because I've never played the game at the highest level, and obviously my stories will not compete with these boys. I can only talk to this topic as a supporter yep. and someone who's been going to the cricket all their life. So I'd like to tell you a, a bit of humour that went over the fence I heard one day, and this has been going on for as long as I've been a boy when you went to Bay 13 in Melbourne or the Hill in Sydney. So, And it's an Australian tradition, as it is in England as well, but some of the finest stuff you hear comes over the boundary. And one day I was at the MCG. It was a test match between Pakistan and Australia. Shah Bakhtar was bowling, and Shah Bakhtar uh, had just been done for chucking. Yep. So he just subsequent to that, he came out to Australia. He'd, he'd finished his spell... He'd been accused of chucking. He'd been getting a fair bit. Anyway, he was fielding at fine leg just in front of us, and we were, from, we were sitting in the members. In front of me were three 14-year-old boys, <laughs> and there was Shoah Bakhtar, and if one got nicked around the corner down to fine leg, Shoah Bakhtar's picked it up, and he's thrown it in like a rocket, bang, right over the bales, and this, this little boy stood up and gone, nice bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I like it. I like it. It's a 14 year old kid. He's a non professional. Yeah. He's gone yeah. to think. And a whole, when you hear a whole stand of people burst out laughing, you go, well done, son. Yeah. The great story off of 2017, Malloy. Brief. But funny That's with it. a good punchline. Oh but, mate, good clearance. He's in the tracksuit, <laughs> having a durry, thinking, go past that. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the dais. I'm on the <laughs> dais. <laughs> so reckon, we're all a short of podium. I reckon you've knocked up 420 in your first oh, uh, innings, Mick. We well go. done. All right. Mix away. All right. Toughers, the great story yeah. off of 2017. Well, right. You're up. OK. Uh, I've got to take you back to the Champions uh, Trophy final. Me yep. and Jonathan Agnew are doing the commentary for TMS BBC. We're there. We got in there half an hour early. We're looking down the team sheet. I look at the Pakistani opening batsman. His name is spelled F U C K A R. Oh, no. So we're sitting there. We're going, oh, that's going to be tricky. Oh, how are we going to do that? <laughs> like that. Anyway, John says, well, not to worry, not to worry like that. So he comes out. He comes out. He is, he's opening the batting and he hits the first one like that. I said, oh, that's a lovely shot by sort of Fuhuka <laughs> or Fuhuka or something like that. Anyway, this goes on for about 10 minutes and then Agnes goes, oh, sod this. We've just got to call it how it is. So he goes, oh, that's a fantastic shot through the offside by Fucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> this goes on. Oh, his, Fucker's pulled a beautiful one there. Oh, it's fantastic. So it's his name. What else it's can we do? Name. It's his name. <laughs> We can't do anything else. Then he got the 19, and we're sitting there like that, and the commentary went. Jonathan Agnew was on the on the mics, and the commentary went, and in comes the uh, the Indian opening bowler, and it's outside. Also, oh, 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 fuckers nicked it. No, fuckers out. No, fuckers nicked it. Yes, caught behind. He's, he's caught behind. Oh, hold on a minute. No, wait a minute. It, it, it might be a no ball. Hold on a minute. Oh, it is a no ball. Oh, oh it's a no ball. That means he's not out. What a lucky chap. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Thank you and oh, good night. And, oh. and Phil, I've heard that commentary. That's exactly how it goes, word for word. Oh, we should get, was it from the ICC it. Champions Trophy final? Yeah. It's unbelievable. Can you get that? Tufnell has to go, but he has dropped a massive hey, bomb. Oh. A massive bomb as Warney's <laughs> giving us a tap on the glass in the Triple M commentary box. Can I do one more on that guy? Can I do a quick story? Yeah. Before oh, a second before story. You, one of my all-time favourites. <laughs> one, one of the great blokes. I remember when, um, when uh, what was his girlfriend's name from 
Liz Hurley. Liz, Liz Hurley, of course. The well, yeah. the well famous Liz Hurley came to town. And before he came to Melbourne, right, he'd, <laughs> Warnie had been preparing, and at his house in Brighton, there was a whole heap of the world's international media camped out waiting for Liz Hurley to arrive. So he's, he's gone to the, the media are camped out the front. The day before she arrived, I swear this is true, he's had delivered to the house a brand new double bed mattress. <laughs> oh. Right? Which has just sat there on the driveway waiting to be picked up. And you know what I thought to myself? I knew he's a fan of the drop in pitch. <laughs> But that is oh. seriously beyond the pale. And that's a true story. Oh. I love that man. That's a nice follow up mix. Oh, stop Some it. there you snuck in two stories. Right. But, but very, very. Clubhouse good. leader? Well. Oh, definitely. No, I think Phil's got. Well, Phil, I can't I've never heard Phil's such foul language on the network. And I, I've, I've got second and third place. Yeah, Kerry, I like in say, pole vault, I've decided not to attempt <laughs> at the first round. I oh. reckon you're chasing 618 oh. on a fifth day pitch and you're five for 15. I got no chance. All right, Kerry. This is the great Triple M story off of 2017. Oh. Mick's gone with the mattress and show of actor. <laughs> I don't often come third, but <laughs> Tough has huge chance here. Toughest <laughs> has gone with the Barker story is the only way of putting it, and you're up. I'm envious every time I walk into this box <laughs> because there are first-class centuries from wall to wall. Gilchrist, Emmy War, yep. uh, Botham. Yep. Uh, uh, Gillespie. Gillespie. Three. I'm sitting here saying as much as Mick about first-class centuries, zero. <laughs> My highest first-class score Pop is 99 not out. Oi. Is it? Yeah. For Australia against Auckland in ni- February 1974. On, Auckland. On a tour at the Eden Park. I bat seven. A team includes the Chapel Brothers, Redpath, Walters, Rod Marsh. Will I get a bat? Good Lord. Five for 138. Huh? I'm walking in to face Bob Cunis. Neither one thing nor the other. <laughs> <laughs> what was his surname? Cunis. <laughs> C-U-N-I-S. Jeez. Stop right there, Kerry, and you got the vote. No, Don't say uh, another it thing. It gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slow early. I'm slow in the middle. I'm slow late. At stumps, <laughs> I'm 82 not out. There were 92 people in the ground. Ian Chappell says, have you got a first-class century skull? I said, no, I haven't. He said, I'm batting on to give you a chance. We're seven down. (laughs) I thought, I won't run out of partners. The boys will be there for me. Five people turned up at the Eden Park when it was known I was resuming. Four were on a mad Monday, and there was a guy there in black sunglasses, a Labrador and a stick. (laughs) After an hour of further blocking... The dog was yelling out, have a go, you mug. (laughs) And the owner was cocking his leg against the wall for a piece. (laughs) I wasn't there to entertain. I was there to get 100. (laughs) I've gone from 82 to 99 in singles. In they come. The pissheads. Gary Gilmore. Caught and bowled Johnny Walker. Four. Johnny Walker. Been on a bender. Ray Bright, Bowl Steinlager, six. (laughs) Max Walker, Court and Bowl Rum and Coke, two. (laughs) In he comes, the number 11. I'm on 99. Ashley Mallett. Oh, jeez. We didn't get on. (laughs) After a while, I said, if I push this on 99 through the covers, will you run? He went, "Mm." (laughs) mmm. Next ball, I push it through the covers. I run. Uh, 19 yards up the pitch. And what does he say? He becomes the first in the history of any guy on 99 not out to be at the non-strikers end and say, wait! (laughs) (laughs) Bloody wait! (laughs) Run out by 18 yards! (sighs) I don't know what Rowdy Mallet does now. I think he hangs around pedestrian crossings. And when the light goes amber, he yells, Wait! <laughs> 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 and that was my highest first-class oh, score. No. Oh. Well done. I don't know how we 
judge this. No, it's tight, I know. <laughs> so, Mick's well, got two well, with a mattress. Phil's off, he can go. Well, I'm not comp- you've got to be it, in the stadium to, to so, get on the podium. Uh, Phil went with the Farker story. Uh, Mick went with the actor, which was very solid, then backed it up with the mattress and to go can double I, can points. Can I, just to make a late play for it, yeah. that was shortly uh, just before show Bakhtar was out, and it was, it was specifically out in the scorebook, out with genital warts. <laughs> no, that's what they said. He wasn't picked. <laughs> out. Aptar out, genital warts. And Pope Skull, two. I don't think, uh, what are we, hands a show? I think it's, it's a draw. Skull. It's got to be an all way draw. Oh. It's got to be all day. Warnie's walked in. <laughs> oh, he'll get the Shane goal Warren's by turning up. <laughs> uh, Warnie, <laughs> welcome to Triple M. You've just missed the great uh, 2017 <laughs> cricket down, story off. Sit down, <laughs> Sit relax. Down. I'm not sure I'm meant to be in here, but I just saw you blokes absolutely <laughs> ripping in here. So I thought, how can I not be in here? That's for sure. I've just been defending you. Have you got your legal oh. team at the back? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's no, not how I saw it. Attacked. Attack. Oh. I, I, I told the story about <laughs> about you at uh, your house in Brighton the day before uh, <laughs> your bird arrived from London. Your bird. <laughs> my ex fiance, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, just the bird. Hey, I've been, the, the, Hill, I've been the Hill of Grace. All right, I'm coming down off a big one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all getting a bit better. So, but you did this, and it's one of the most spit it out, things spit I've it ever out. seen. Was that you had the whole of the world's media camped out the front of your, of your house, and the day before you, she arrived, true or false, you had a double mattress delivered to your house, which sat <laughs> on the driveway out the front of your house. Well, it is true. Yes, yes it's true. Yes. <laughs> I, I, and yes, I said I knew he's a fan of the drop-in pitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I thought that the, the really the kicker was that the next door neighbours' kids that were about ten and twelve were selling cordial, and the people out the front of the house just <laughs> for fifty cents. Yeah, what a class of cordial here. Tony Greg was sticking a, a, a key into the mattress. Who, who was? I don't know. I'm not <laughs> saying anymore. Anyway, that was good. And the other bit I loved too, while you're here too, was yeah, Ascot okay. was always. Ascot, which one? You like the bullfrog, did you? I like the bullfrog. Wrap the laughing gear around oh, the point. I love it, mate. How are you going here? What do you make of all this? But don't worry about the cricket. Let's keep talking. What about some other stuff here, Mick? What? Well, we were rolling out the best cricket, funniest cricket stories we had, Wardy. I don't know if you want to enter this late. We've been your very limited preparation. Skulls, everyone should just shut up and listen to Skull. Well, hey. Skull delivered his 99, uh, his Wardy. highest first-class score. Right. You had a beauty you told me the other day about uh, Phil Tufnell. When you yes. were at, it was at Leaderville in WA. That's correct. We beat England in Perth. And um, Phil Tufnell, I think he'd, on on this station, he's been telling you exactly what sort of mental state he was in yes. at that stage. And I remember we won the test match. We went in for a beer. We're all sitting around uh, having a drink, and there's this wheelie bin next to us. And we sort of thought, just make a bit of a noise, that wheelie bin. Next minute, the lid flies open. <laughs> Tufnell comes out with his sunnies on. <laughs> Fag hanging out of his mouth and just said, right, Governor, <laughs> hiding in a wheelie bit. Okay. It was strange that he had to go to this special house after that. <laughs> just How like, long had he been there? <laughs> I don't know, but Did he, you lived in a little, he lived in a little special house and um, oh, well. it was a bit of fun. It had, a happy, <laughs> had a happy ending. That's, uh, that's a good late entry from Warren. He's oh, coming well, unprepared and delivered a real it's sharp one. And one of my favourite stories of Skull Tells is... Um, <laughs> Well, he's got so many wonderful stories. But mm. I was once at a function and um, Skull said, they, someone asked Kerry, he said, uh, what did you think about Shane Warne and uh, his captaincy? <laughs> Do you think he should have been captain of Australia? And Skull went to this 15-minute um, wonderful uh, summary of my cricketing life. And it was something along the, uh, the, uh, the lines that... Uh, he might not have. He would have been a wonderful captain between the hours of 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. <laughs> but from 6:05 p.m. till 4 a.m., I don't think he was the right choice. <laughs> 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 it was something along those it lines. Was, anyway, I, I might have left out a little bit, Howard, in between, no, but it was nice. something along I those lines. Nice. I'm glad you Once six up. o'clock came, it was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, hey, extraordinary. This was like yes. a royal visit. Thank you for yes. swinging oh, by you, yes. SK you, you can bow if you like. Oh, well, I will. <laughs> How's but, everything? But I'm also quite prepared to take you up and just see how good you are after 6 p.m. <laughs> well, so, is that a challenge? This game finishes at 11 o'clock go. at night. We're right in the mixer straight Come after on. it, Mick. <laughs>